So there we go. So I'm here to answer questions both about the class and what we're going to get involved in as well as the first assignment which is to make your own animatable clock just using the Maya hierarchy. So if anybody has any questions to start off with then I'd be happy to answer those. And if you don't Correct. So the uh, the assignment right now is a part one of two, which is this clock simple rig assignment. And the requirements are just to make the clock. You don't have to animate anything yet. Make sense? I'm not actually in the class. I'm just hanging out. But I will ask cool. a question that will probably be helpful. Excellent. So super easy but I doubt like it was in depth yeah how would you make it in the hierarchy just without using the parent and unparent things how would so I like when, you, when you're parenting things in your hierarchy yeah obviously there's like the wherever it is like the edit or the mesh or whatever that says parent and unparent but if you just wanted to do that just looking at the hierarchy and dragging or dropping it sure how do you do that uh, you can middle mouse drag so just let's do an example with some primitives and that's a good question and thank you for asking so that we can demonstrate that cool stuff I'll just make a sphere and a cube real quick and so we can see them in the hierarchy if I move one of them the other one doesn't move and we could use that command like you said to parent them by selecting both of them and then clicking the command or the letter but if I just want to parent them right in here if you try to click and then click and drag onto something it doesn't work and it's kind of confusing and frustrating but instead if you select something and you middle mouse click and drag then it puts it into a hierarchy like that so now the way this is situated um, let's try I'll try to just middle mouse this cube without first selecting it uh, yeah that works too you don't have to select it first yeah you can just middle mouse drag if you want to drag a bunch of stuff though you're gonna to want to select it all then middle mouse drag wherever you want to put it. Um, so do keep that in mind. But now with the sphere as the parent and the cube as the child, I can move them both and move the child by itself. There we go. Cool. So do you guys have any questions about the class, what we are going to be doing, how the class is going to work, or about the assignment? any information you are missing or confused about because that is the purpose of these meetings. Correct. Yeah. So I'm going to try to make sure that in each assignment there is a link to Google Drive right here. Pop up here. And so homework folders, uh, revisions for after you've gotten a grade at least once and then want to improve your grade you can put your revisions in there. Just be sure to name it with the uh, name of the, the homework number on it. Uh, if I give out examples and resources, I'll put them in here. In our homework folders, there we go. We've got the first one already upset. And you can just plop your Maya file in there. There will sometimes be other file types that will require, but I'll be sure to let you know what they are and how to make them before it becomes an issue. Good question. And you can also... Uh, no um, you don't need a project folder for most of what we're doing I just want the Maya scene if you're making a project folder for every Maya scene you don't have to do that uh, mostly the purpose for that would be to get textures to associate in the right place if you make something that really requires the textures zip the project and drop it in uh, but don't drop the entire hierarchy in All right, any other questions about any of this information? I do have just basic Norco information, how to use Discord, you're obviously here, so you're doing that, and lots of software recommendations, some of which are not Maya, but for this class it's not particularly important. Uh, you had it pretty much listed there in the assignment, but mm -hmm. it looks like we just need an, an, 
actual clocks called the two hands. Right. And they need some sort of uh, bell, basically. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that we're going to animate something striking the top of the hour. So that could just be mechanical stuff like bells and, and hammers and stuff. Or it could be a character like what I've done here. I would recommend that if you want to find a good reference, then you look at like Pinocchio, like I did, because they have a bunch of little cuckoo clocks that are all very charming. Uh, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Simple is just fine with this. And even if I didn't have a character, we still have a pendulum that could animate here. Um, we've still got hands that can move up here at the top. And then, yeah, I just want some other kind of mechanism to show top of the hour, such as a bell that can ring. And you get as complicated as you want with your modeling. That's up to you. Um, since this is a more advanced class, it's assumed that you already know how to 3D model and you know how to delete your history and all of that stuff, but I demonstrated it in the video. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where's your hierarchy? You can go to, oh man, I always forget this. What is it? Display or view? Uh, Windows. Windows. Yeah, I always kind of like poke around. So Outliner is the official name of it. Windows Outliner. Um, I actually have a button here, and I don't know if every single version of Maya has that button, but sometimes it's been missing, which is kind of odd, that opens and closes the Outliner. If you accidentally move this away and close it, then you could panic, but button right there. You can also dock them again by just dragging the top until you get the blue highlighted line. And then you can put it wherever you like, but I would recommend putting it right there because it's a nice place to store it. Robert's thinking of all these problems that are going to come up that I'm <laughs> not considering, <laughs> which is very helpful. I'm trying to do that too, but I just can't think of anything. Well, it's okay. I mean, this is the simplest assignment just to kind of get us rolling, and there will definitely be things that come up when we're doing full uh, character rigging and such. That stuff will come up. Mm -hmm. Probably. Don't worry about making your uh, model particularly efficient or smart at the moment. Just make it so that it looks nice. Uh, you can see from my wireframe that I just stick things in the side and don't really care about efficiency too much here. Um, I'm not worried about it. All of the little cobbles on the bottom are just spheres that have been flattened and cut in half, so not really a big deal for me. Um, take that into consideration when we're putting things into the Unity engine or if you've got a very large scene, but for now I'm not going to really bother too much about that. Just out of curiosity. Yeah. Uh, for the class I use, it's just one. It's about half and half. Um, so we will do 2D character animation in Unity. We'll do 3D character animation. We'll also set up a full 3D character rig and we'll animate that rig as well. So we're going to sort of alternate between making the thing that we're going to play with and then making a performance out of that thing. Let me see, I think I've got all the modules here. And also in the syllabus, I think it, it lays it out. Actually, the syllabus might be easier place to look at it. So you can see the assignments. 2D character, 2D character setup, 3D character import. I don't know if these are in order. They don't look like they're in order, in fact. I will make a full character rig over several weeks. Right. It does say that, and that does give me the freedom to choose that, but I would be poorly serving you if we didn't talk about rigging because rigging is completely essential for game development animation. It's going to be very rare for you to find a ready-to-animate and game engine-ready um, character. You can find performance animation characters easily, but they don't go very well into uh, the Unity game engine. And so if we only focused on animation purely, it wouldn't really fit game development very well. It would be more for an animation-centric uh, curriculum. So we can see really quick what we're going to end up doing, um, learning animation basics in Maya, animating the clock. So we're not going to do it next week just so that you guys have a chance to fix anything broken. Uh, then we're going to move on to Unity, animating 2D characters and setting them up in Unity. Then 
dealing with 3D characters before we make them. Then there's Spring Break. Then we're finally going to go into importing into Unity full 3D characters and then setting up a full 3D rig before we animate it towards the end. I've also got the ability to um, do little one-offs like talking about spline IK setup and other things if we really need to. And we might do particles in the final week. No chance of uh, was it script driven animations, right? Um, there is a chance of that. Are you interested in that? A little bit, not gonna lie. Script driven within Maya or within Unity? Uh, probably Unity, but okay. Can you give me an example of the type of thing that you have in mind? Because that could be a lot of stuff. So, like, uh, when characters are climbing stairs, and so the for the feet go to the floor right in an appropriate position. yeah um that is hard let me see if there's a place that that would make sense to put naturally it might make sense to put it in here week eight as an option that you're already making cycles and that's half of the job the other half of the job is having the logic that says when you're in this area aim your foot at this point but honestly, I would have to do an example myself first to make sure that it's something that I can easily explain. I've done a little bit of it before, but not in a very robust way. Um, we could also do that towards the very end because spline is pretty optional. It's something that you can look up. Um, Spline-based character is going to be a creature, which we're using scripts to trigger and activate and blend the animations, but not necessarily to target them. I guess in part this is what you're talking about. Um, what we did last time we had a sort of uh, potted plant character that would follow you with its face but also animate when you got close enough. So that's something that potentially we can do with scripting. Yeah, that sounds like it's on the same uh, yeah. field. It is. Um, some things are a lot harder though. So what you were describing is like an IK setup along with an animated character which is a bit harder, but still the same sort of ballpark, really. So yeah, we could potentially do that. Cool, thanks. Yeah. Any other questions, you guys, about what is in store, how we're going to do it, etc.? Are we going to mention the dev notes at the end? I'll mention them. I mean, they don't really have much of a place in game development animation though because they don't translate although blend shapes do but you would have to sort of turn a deformer into a blend shape to make that work which is the the problem um, if I don't know if all of you guys know what he's talking about but we'll just use this cube for an example uh, if I go into I think it's in rigging yeah there are nonlinear deformers in here that are really fun and they're very easy to do certain kinds of animation within Maya, but the problem is they don't translate into um, a game engine. So Bend is the easiest example in which we can do this sort of thing. And we can animate that number so that we get sort of a, a wiggly character, or we can even offset the handle so that the curvature works differently, like that. Uh, we can extend it, let's see, is that low bound? Yeah, let's look down. We can extend it so now we've got you know something attached to a ceiling. Uh, but what's happening is all the vertices are being moved. There's no bones in here. And Unity needs um, either a hierarchy or bones to work. So we're moving vertices at the moment. We can make that happen, but we've got to create a blend shape. So if I duplicate this curving tube now, and then I just delete this to set it back to normal, I've got two states of this cube and I can make a blend shape out of that. So right up here, so it says at the bottom, create a new blend shape on an object or group that can blend between uh, other deformations of the original mesh. So I think it's that I select this one first, that one second, we'll see. And I'll just hit create blend shape. So now this one can blend between those two states. Notice that it's not exactly bending the vertices are just heading to their new position. So you get slightly strange in-between states like this, but close enough to, to kind of approximate what we're looking for. This is something that Unity can understand. So you can use a blend shape as 
an animation feature and it will properly show up in the engine. Um, at one point in a past assignment, we made a, a beating heart like that. We used a combination of bones and blend shapes to make the heart go wub dub. And we use that as a pickup in a little simulated Unity scene. So yeah. So could you, so could you fix the, uh, the, uh, the pinching by adding an extra blend shape like somewhere in the middle there? Yep. And you would have to because there's not really another way to do this unless you wanted to attach bones. And in this case, um, this simple bend would probably be better served with bones than blend shapes because all we're doing is swinging this thing around in a circle. So we could cleverly set up bones and paint weights to do this effect better than, than blend, blend shapes could. But yeah, if we put a, um, a pose right here, I guess, duplicate that, and then we set this one back to straight. So now if I go, I don't know what order to select these in, but like one, two, three, blend shape. So now I could first animate this one and then simultaneously animate that one and that one turning off and we get our proper deformation. So I guess as an example, if I key all of this on frame one, on frame 10, I key this and this, and then on frame 20, I key that one at 100%, this one at zero, then our animation should play a little bit jerky. <laughs> a little bit jerky, but it is kind of doing the thing. The reason it's doing that sort of hiccup as it's moving, where it sort of pauses and then re-accelerates, is either due to the fact that our blend shapes are trying to do something they're not really meant for, or it could be that in our graph editor, we've got the wrong kind of tangents for our ease in and out. And that's another concept that we'll have to cover. It may be better served if I just took all of these and made them linear like this. This is the way that you interpret between position and time, by the way. We'll learn a lot about the graph editor um, starting next week. But now it might play a little bit better. Let's see. Yeah, a little. I still see some sort of wiggly growing and shrinking happening in the in the tip of the thing, unfortunately. But Are you baking vertice movement? That I think works, but that's an expensive form of data. So yes, but have some caution and only use that if it's very complicated and you need to use it. I would also do a test first just to make sure that it comes through faithfully. But I believe that what Unity does is kind of treats that as a blend shape at that point. Maybe not for the purposes of scripting. Let's see, where's that menu? Now I don't remember where that menu is for baking simulation. Bake existing animation to Kizia. I think this is the one. And then it gives us an option as what do you want to bake? So we could drive um, driven channels and control points. That one might be what we have to do. In this case, keep unbaked keys. I'd have to think about it a little bit more, but I think that I've tried that before and yes, it worked, but knowing that you are recording information for every single vertice means that it's a lot more data. So it wouldn't be a normal animation method, that's for sure. Okay. Any other questions for now, you guys? There was also the general sort of informational like what is animation actually what is rigging actually um, you might have questions about that because that's kind of a broad topic and i just really skimmed over it in these articles so if you have questions about that like what is the process of creating a rig then i'm happy to answer that as well but it sounds like you guys are pretty informed you don't have any other frequently asked questions you can think of not that I can think of off the top of my head. I usually rely on students for that. Like you try it out, you have trouble and you go, why isn't this working? I go, oh yeah, that thing doesn't work sometimes. 
because for me, it all happens very smoothly. I've got a lot of experience doing this stuff. So all the, the former mistakes that I used to make, I no longer make. I do, but I'm not giving it to them yet because I don't want them to panic looking at that checklist. You want me to, since you guys are, are here, I mean, I can show you guys as long as I can find it. Where did I put that? I've got a gigantic document. The, yeah, here it is. <laughs> I'm going to put this in your resources section. I'll probably copy the contents to a module at one point. But this is sort of like the full list of if you are going to rig a full character, full 3D character, what should you do? What order you do, do you need to do it in? And what are the problems that are going to happen while you do it? So modeling, skeleton, skinning, controls, testing, quality of life improvements, and troubleshooting. And it's a lot of stuff that you got to do. <laughs> uh, it's only nine pages. It is only nine pages, but it might take you nine days. <laughs> <laughs> got a goblin laugh there that's cool yeah so and a lot of this is like optional so we got pull vectors and set drum keys you don't always use those on every single one um, but you might you don't always use a spline IK but I've got advice about handling that as well um, testing is super important for rigging uh, quality of life is important if you're working in a studio setting um, and it's really more of a checklist than instructions it's reminders check for skinning problems you got to know what that means before this list is helpful to you. So it's not an instruction manual. Why can't I select anything? Hey, I found this auto rigging tool. Can I just use that? Sure. <laughs> yeah, so that's my, my full reminder checklist. But just to be clear, it's not going to teach you how to um, rig by itself. It's just going to remind you of what you already know. And to be honest, I use it still because it's very easy to forget one or two small things. There's a lot of steps. Yep, it sure is. And all of the tiny solutions that only work for one or two versions of Maya and then stop working and you have to f learn something else. <laughs> Any other questions? Because if not, I do have terms here that I want you guys to be familiar with. Just because I'll use them a lot. We'll talk about them more next week when we get into more fundamentals of animation. Um, I mean next week. So on Friday, it's just another one of these days. Uh, hopefully by Friday, you guys have tried to build the clock already. And if something went wrong, Friday is your opportunity to get help from me, um, literally about your project. If you put it off until the weekend, then you've got to turn it in before we ever get the chance to talk again. All right, you guys, if that's all the questions, then that's all the meeting. These can be fairly short and simple, or they can take a long time and have a lot of back and forth where I'm helping you problem solve things, but it's sort of up to you because officially we're not supposed to have synchronous meetings. They're all in video. Okay. Any last minute questions before I stop recording and say meeting adjourned? I, <laughs> I would be a little insulted, but really, you'd just be robbing yourself of practice. That's the real thing. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, get that practice. Repetition is the best way to memorize something, anyway. Yeah. It's the only reason I got good grades in high school is memorization, memorization, memorization. Well, luckily, rigging is a lot of memorization. I mean, that was a downside for me when I first learned to do it because I don't have a very good uh, memory. But uh, if you can memorize the steps, rigging is very mechanistic that way, and you can be quite successful making rigs that way. All right, you guys. Then thank you for coming, and uh, I'll go ahead and stop the recording. I'll upload this just as the Q&A, 
and we'll do another one on Friday. Remember that you guys don't have to attend both of them or either of them if you don't want to, but if you have problems, please do come in and ask me about them because I'm happy to demonstrate things on camera and it helps everybody because a lot of people will just lurk and secretly watch the videos hoping for information without ever showing up themselves to ask the question. So help those wee little folks out by asking your question on camera. Thank you guys. Thank you. It, it, it was nice seeing, uh, talking to you guys again. Seriously. Yep. Um, We've all been too isolated. Oh no. You got like the sick.